everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Mosh, here today to talk to you about Indistinct Beacon from the Netherlands based band Gavrin. This one is coming off of Dunk Records. Indistinct Beacon is Gavrin's second album, and Gavrin plays a very satisfying take on sludge metal. A sludge that emphasizes a lot of atmosphere and particularly sprawling composition. Every track in this album clocks in at over nine minutes long and justifiably so. And in fact, I would say necessary as it allows for each of these tracks to really develop and unfurl each passage is given enough time to really soak into your ears and mature and be felt at its full potential there's a bit of a post-metal tinge to this album as well in, in the way that the tracks sort of build to a certain point and then break down again. Dvorak, the first track here, kicks things off with some very thick and hazy guitar riffs that compact with a ton of fuzz and just massive low end. You get these very clean sung vocals that sort of trade places often with some very sickened growls. Well, there's never at any point a ton of things happening at once here. The production on this album and, and the mixing does a fantastic job of making all the instruments just sound gigantic and put forth a ton of clarity. There is a point where things sort of quiet down in a particular section. The vocals become a lot darker and more delivered as a kind of whisper. You get these sparring notes and little flourishes from the guitars. Some very sparse cymbal work from the drummer. And this little detour that the band takes on this track allows for the crushing last run to really pulverize you and to really be felt at its highest potential. And that trick they do, they just do it so well here. On Talish, the band continues that clean, harsh contrast really well. Uh, the way they do this consistently just adds such an intriguing and impressive dynamic range on the album. There's these really tasteful, distorted arpeggios that sort of interact with the more methodical, doomy riffs. The guitars throughout create these very memorable and standout grooves. There is also this really funereal midsection with some more creepy sung clean vocals. And there's even this spoken word bit on top that sits and floats over a very minimalist and 
bleak instrumental backdrop. And so because of this, when it suddenly jolts you into this very heavy and punishing section with no real warning or segue at all, the intensity is just experienced at a whole nother level. It's fascinating. And the screen vocals here are particularly blood curdling. On the track, Dim, I'm very much enjoying the contrast between the more melodic song bits and the absolutely desolate guitars and how those kind of work in tandem simultaneously. I love the give and take the guitars do, rotating between these more bright leads and these more punchy, slow burning riffs and how they kind of switch places over and over again. For the most part, the drums here stay mainly in the pocket with an occasional venture out. And that is a common thing for drummers in sludge metal to do, but the way the band does it here, it demands your attention through sheer aggression and violence. <laughs> the way the drummer does this, it so they suck you in by making every single snare smack and cymbal crash be completely felt every single note and every movement the drummer does matters here. On Duhavi, you get some very airy, very echo heavy, clean strums. It feels particularly shimmering and kind of warm, but at the same time, you can kind of feel those developing and churning and kind of moving forward and foreshadowing something much nastier. There's this very spacey midsection as well with some, I would say, kind of odd effects. There's this hyper delay, I would say, on the guitars. The drums are almost excessively minimalist here and, and the vocals seem to kind of just drift off into a daze. But that's until the loud clashing guitars just smack you unforgivingly again. The band does this loud, quiet thing a lot, but it never, I never get tired of it. The band just executes it so well every single time and presents those moments with enough diversity in the composition to keep it interesting and never feel stale so that each time they do that, it never loses its effect for me. Pesek, while equally heavy as all the tracks, it also feels a lot more melodic in how the riffs kind of progress forward. There's a real somber and evocative mood looming over this track. There is a section here, a particular moment, where everything kind of feels very serene, but at the same time, holding on to probably the grisliest, harsh vocal delivery on the entire record. It's definitely a bold contrast and a 
very intriguing moment and decision by the band. The sung vocals are much more immediate and catchy on this track and that feels very intentional. There are an, multiple mood changes on this record uh, and, and kind of changes in texture and feeling that come out at various moments and they kind of all want to be felt but you can only really experience one of those moods at a time and you can kind of feel that tension as they fight each other. It's just a very interesting and very awesome display of dynamics and control that this band has. Well, this record is never overly proggy or complicated. There, this record is definitely very adventurous. It's a very interesting and unique way to approach sludge metal. I just am such in admiration of the patience the band displays in constructing these tracks and, and the care in how they're put together. This thing is explorative and punishing and at times moving as well. There's just great writing, fantastic composition, excellent understanding of dynamics and dynamic shifts, and just fantastic musicianship put on display throughout. I haven't talked about sludge a lot on this channel, so if you've been looking for that, here is your recommendation. This is a fantastic way of approaching that subgenre. And those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. It helps get this video across to more people. It would mean the world to me if you would hit that subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Please leave a comment if you would be so obliged. I love reading those. I love interacting with those. I have a Twitter you can follow. The link to that is in the bio of this YouTube channel. Please, keep it metal. My name is Maddie, aka Beaver Mosh. Signing off.